Welcome back, everyone, to the 2018 Fall Chess Classic. I'm joined by another special guest, Havane Skabuzian, after Hello. defeating Christopher Yu. Uh, congratulations on a, a stellar tournament performance. Um, so I want to ask about this game because you were, uh, you were in a situation, you already clinched the, the um, first place prize, but your opponent was playing for his final international master norm. Um, and he was in a must-win situation for the black pieces. Have you been in the situation before where your opponent is playing for a norm in the last round and you have to um, kind of be the, the one who takes him down? Well, I remember it happened a couple of times, but usually you need just to try to play your chess. Uh, but my opponent need a draw or a win to get norm? I, I didn't even know about he, it. He, he would have needed to win this game. Ah, then some you just need to play, and I was like uh, already done with the tournament. I mean, I fixed the first place. I decided to just to like to play a good, uh, play a good game. Uh, I didn't know that my opponent is playing for a norm, mm -hmm. and I, but he played very well. He, he was about to succeed, in the, especially after opening. Yeah, I was uh, at some point. I, I was really liking Black's position. Um, it was an opening which oh, seemed can, very rare after C six move. Uh, is this something you prepared pawn e4? Well, no. When you played c6, usually I play here d4, and it's Grunfeld like mm -hmm. variation yeah, d4, d5. with well-known theories, like many moves after d5. But I just decided to, to try to play like interesting. I wasn't sure about e4. I just wanted to try it because I remembered sometimes. But I'm I'm not sure if I'm correct. But like if pawn is on c4 and knight c3, Blake don't play c6 because of, because of e4. But I'm not sure if it's about this position. I just wanted to try for, and well, yeah, d5, e5. And after e5, I was trying to look this up in uh, in the database to try Maybe to find high-level games. Maybe it was better games. first to take on d5 and later to play five. C D C D mm -hmm. and d5. Knight d4 in some positions. Also looks playable. Yeah, playable positions. But at least according to the database, this uh, yeah. position already after e5 seemed incredibly rare. Yeah, I, so. I felt like. It's kind of a new position, and I was just trying to play a little, some logical moves. And I also want to ask you, because you stood out as a player in, in both fields who was moving the absolutely like, quickest speed, um, just basically blitzing out moves. It seemed like most games you were having half hour to an hour time advantage on the clock. W is this your usual play, or were you trying to, um, I mean, was a kind of specific strategy uh, for this it's event? It's my style. Like mm -hmm. I, I play, I'm playing like I say, every tournament, every single game. I, it's not that, like I'm doing something special, but uh, I'm trying to calculate my moves at the time of my opponent, and later I'm be, being ready to make like move faster. And mm -hmm. usually, getting this time advantage from the opening gives me some uh, ad possibilities in the like end game to put my opponent in time trouble and sometimes like today happened my opponent blundered the piece because of like time to, he had that's like exactly one minute happens, yeah. right it has happens a lot and it, that's my strategy sometimes so you're saying that um so i was going to ask if you re rely more on intuition than calculation yeah the, the, it's mostly on because sometimes i'm trying to calculate i'm calculating a lot it's very important because you can blunder something mm -hmm. but sometimes like in, when i'm making more or less positional decisions i'm trying to depend on my intuition because there are some positions you you have nothing to calculate. You right. just need to feel like how is it better. Something to also happened today in the game. Yeah, I'm trying to depend on intuitions. Mm -hmm. So take us through the critical moments because at some point... C5 it was very interesting move. Mm -hmm. I even didn't thought about C5. I, was, I missed this move absolutely. I thought about some maybe B6 move or, uh, or uh, take on c4, maybe better a queen c4 and b6. The idea is to play bishop a6 and take the uh, castle ability. Uh, that was interesting position. I thought many moves here, but uh, I just wa was waiting for a move. So mm -hmm. yes, c5 was a very interesting move. And seemed like he was able to develop very harmoniously. Yeah, the, the, at this moment already I realized that my position is not that good. Because mm -hmm. black species placed much better than mine. And here, uh, I uh, again, I thought that knight d5 is not that good, but I don't know real why. I thought queen d5, h3, bishop f3 takes, uh, yeah, queen f3, takes, takes. I, I, I'm sorry, bishop f3, not queen f3. 
-hmm. Yeah, queen e5, take on c6, uh, e2, rook e2, b3, rook e7. I wanted to play this endgame. I think it's a little better for white because c pawns are n like okay, rook e8 takes takes, and king f1, and now I'm threatening both like bishop a3 and rook b1. Maybe it's our equal, but I just wanted to play this position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems. Maybe uh, I can make some a little. Uh, sometimes I I thought about a4, a5, rook a4. So uh, maybe it's uh, equal or even a little better for me, but. Uh, after 95, I was in trouble because my pawn structure is very bad now. I have double the pawn, and will have I, I will have weaknesses soon. Yeah, it seemed ugly, especially yeah. after a um, bit later when he played this move c4. It seemed like your bishop was just a well. Bit I'm stuck. not sure about c4. I don't mm -hmm. like c4 actually because uh, like after rook b3, how I played, I was thinking about rook a d8. Okay, c4 and d6. Like. Uh, just l if take a look on the queenside pawn of white, it's terrible. Like everything is hanging, like as d4 square. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I can. Okay, I can try to use white squares, like take on e6, play queen e4. Mm, but I don't like this position. After a queen exchange, it will be not so easy for white to play. Mm -hmm. And also, e five, uh, e six. Uh, he can prepare firstly e six, maybe with rook e eight, e six. I mean, generally the pawn structure on queen side uh, is terrible. So mm -hmm. after c four, I got some abilities to. Yeah, so maybe c four. Activate not my, the most accurate e especially move. my bishop on c one. Mm -hmm. And going forward here, it seems still like relatively balanced, though. Yeah, if, and uh, e six and d four was important move because. If I leave my pawn on d2, it will be terrible, and now I'm activating all the pieces. And here was the position I told you about. Uh, I played by intuition, just d6. I even didn't calculate it. Mm. I only saw that queen d6 taking b5 and takes queen d5. Yeah, I really like this move. It just seems like you. Yeah, because uh, otherwise I, I will have some problem. And the main idea is it's not about like I'm trying to win back the pawn, but uh, I'm not giving black bishop on g8 opportunity to play somewhere bishop f8. And replace my rook. Just let's imagine for somehow like take on d5, take on e7 somewhere. I mean, uh, and bishop f8 later will uh, take my rook from b4. Mm -hmm. So I just, where you want yeah, I, I just mm -hmm. trying to close the bishop and to attack b5. So yeah, after d6, it seemed like maybe a shift in momentum. It's and so very cool, I think. Mm -hmm. But he was getting very low on time. Yeah, to more or less. Figure out how to. And they realized that if uh, we change like. I take on b5, I will be able to make a little pressure on the queen side down in the pawns, but obviously it should be equal. Rook e8. Here I'm, I missed some uh, move on. After b bishop h6 was correct here, because mm -hmm. b takes a4 already gives me some play. Uh, I thought about like take a, a, a b5, a b5, rook b5, bishop b3, rook e3, and rook, I missed rook a1 check, because now rook mm. e3, queen a8, and rook b8. And, uh, yeah, king g2. No, I, I mean that's bad for the white. So after bishop h6, I cannot really take on uh, b5. Maybe I need to play here rook b take take and play rook b1. A takes b5, a b5, rook uh, d b1. Uh, b b1, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now bishop e3, rook e3, rook e3 maybe queen a8. No, no, I mean queen a8. Check. Oh, queen a8. Yeah, it's hanging. Yeah. It looks like bad mm -hmm. for white. Um, I don't know what should I play after bishop h6. Maybe I missed some opportunity, but that was a good move. After b takes a4, I already have a little advantage. Cause, cause yeah, it already seemed pleasant, like all of these yeah, pawns for black. Rook are a, I, I took my uh, rook from this pin. Of course, it also should be divided. Mm -hmm. Rook b5 here was maybe interesting move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, idea is to play somewhere rook h5. For example, for some mating attack. Yeah, but here rook h5 is not that good because I can play queen f1 and a6 is hanging. And now the problem is if like he tr take pawn on c3, I will be able somewhere to play rook a8 because rook on h5 is out of the game now, and I will I can make pressure on, 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 on with the h rank. Mm -hmm. Using it. So we. Yeah, we saw the position around here, but didn't really see where where he fell apart. To, um, well, he was playing correct till the very end. He just mm -hmm. blundered space. 
I mean, it's, it's like slightly better for white because uh, I have a little more active pieces and my king is safe. The main problem for black is this. For example, let's imagine if pawn was on h5, that was absolutely mm -hmm. equal. Pawn h5 here. I, I right. mean, no, not the move. Uh, let's imagine this that is pawn is on f h5, the mm -hmm. same position, so black is fine because he don't have problems with his king. How, like, uh, how it happened when you have and rook c3, yeah. And rook a6. Now black has the problem with the h rank and uh, king. So bishop f8. The point is after rook a8, uh, with the ideal some rook a8 and rook next one to a8, rook b3 mm -hmm. is drawing. Uh, other one, rook b3, rook b3 mm -hmm. and rook b8. So that's not working. I played bishop f4. But it's all, it's, uh, yeah, here, I, the, that was better move, I think, some rook b8, maybe. Because uh, the rook end game with d4 pawn should be equal, I think. Mm -hmm. there, there is not much. And he can activate his, like, play later rook c2 and the rook b2. So that was, uh, rook c4 was a little mistake, very little. Rook a8, <coughs> king g7, rook e1. I thought that I'm winning after rook e1 because I missed g5, which was the, I think, only move here. Because uh, in any other move, I, I'm threatening to take rook f8 or play rook a8. g5, bishop d2, maybe. Rook c2, bishop b3. And this should be like draw. I mean, s like a super small advantage for a white. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little pressure, but of course, the only th that's the point that he hit here one minute and just plundered. Yeah, I mean, g5 is a type of move that you don't find with find a lot of time. g5, uh, there are no, no other moves. I'm threatening to play rook f8 and rook e, e1, e8 also. Mm -hmm. So both are winning. He played here rook b7, trying to defend from rook 8, but rook f8 and. Yeah, rook f8 yeah. is a nice, uh, nice simple tactical yeah, finish. So. Um, yeah, we were, I was looking at this earlier and um, just assumed that you were winning around this point and also missed g5. So I was nice. sure. I thought, oh, I won because I thought rook c4 is a mistake because rook a8, king g7 is the only move, and rook e1, I thought, oh, I won. And I, later on, I see g5, uh, okay, throw, and uh -huh. he blundered. Wow. I got lucky. Well, of course, it didn't matter how uh, how this game turned out for you. You still had clinched the, uh, the game after... Um, after tomorrow, even though you lost, or after yesterday, after you, you oh, lost. Oh, yesterday, I lost terribly. I blundered in one move. And so, I, I don't know why I played very bad. So how did it feel to lose a game yesterday and then realize you clinched victory because uh, players I had some, drew, uh, could catch up to you? some mixed feelings. I lost and I guaranteed my first play, so right. I was sometimes happy and sometimes sad. A mixed emotion, that makes uh, makes sense. But anyway, yeah, I, I was angry because with six points, I thought that I will be able to fix my first place somehow, and uh, I lost, so I was mostly unhappy. So what's next for you? You, I know you're a student at uh, at Texas. Are you uh, going to focus on school for the next few months? or do you have Yeah, I missed uh, school, like 10 days. I was not really studying because during the tournament, it's not that easy. You're preparing, you're something you want to take a rest from. Mm -hmm brain work to relax mm -hmm. so I'll try to catch up my classes for a couple of weeks but I will play uh, I have a tour I, I, right now I'm going for a t university tournament in Lubbock Texas mm -hmm. Collegiate Super Finals it starts like on Saturday and after mm -hmm. I will go back very nice I have one last question not related to this tournament mm -hmm. uh, asked uh, Alexei Dreyev this too next month is a world championship match between Carlson and Caruana um, who are you rooting for in that match, and who do you think will ultimately win? Well, uh, to be honest, I'm not supporting any of players, like, spiritually, but uh, I, I think it will be a very interesting match, because right now Corona is in uh, perfect shape. He's demonstrating a very strong chest, and okay, Carson is always strong, mm -hmm. so it will be very interesting. Well, sounds good. Well, I'll let you go and celebrate and maybe rest up, and um, we'll be back with another quick commercial break and stay tuned for more action from the 2018 Fall Chess Classic.